This is the story of Kurt Weishaupt, whose quest for freedom took him across six countries and an entire ocean. A true epic of love, perseverance, and faith. A unique tale of how a promise to God inspired a man to save the lives of thousands. I was so desperate. I made a promise to God. I said, if you get me out of this situation, I will try to do good for the rest of my life. Hitler's campaign of terror has begun, and Kurt, a 22-year-old Jewish salesman, will soon become aware of the danger. His selfless promise begins to take shape in Mordfelden, outside Frankfurt, after a decisive encounter with drunken Nazis. When we arrived in Mordfelden, 50 guys were waiting for me already. Well, I got the beating of my lifetime, I'm telling you. When I came home and my mother saw me, she was despaired. Fearing more violence, he goes to Italy, leaving behind his family and girlfriend, Trude. She was really an extraordinary woman, a lovely woman. I was in love with her, still am. She came to visit me every five, six weeks. And one day she came and said, she has figured out it is much too expensive, these, all these trips. It's much cheaper to get married. Yes. As a matter of fact, she was well prepared. She brought the rings along, too. So it was difficult to resist. And I never was sorry that I did. So we got married in Milano. In Milan, Kurt finds help through Joseph Marx, a leather distributor who employs him all over southern Europe. Meanwhile, on the world stage, Hitler befriends Mussolini, who expels all non-Italian Jews from the country. Kurt applies for an American visa, but the process takes too long, and soon the Gestapo knocks on his door. Without valid papers, Kurt and Trude smuggle themselves into France and settle in Nice. The first day of September 1939, Hitler invades Poland, prompting England and France to declare war on Germany. The French government, perceiving a threat from within, imprisons thousands of male foreigners in concentration camps. Kurt instructs Trude to write to a business acquaintance in Marseille so they may keep track of each other while he is confined. We were brought to an old brick factory, which was our concentration camp, which was about the worst thing I have ever seen. The dust from the bricks filled the air, and the floor was covered with about a foot of that dust so that you were breathing constantly this terrible condemned air. And I know it would get worse before it would get better. Weeks turn into months, and in June 1940, the German army breaks through the French lines. Stuck in a camp, Kurt fears for his life and strikes his bargain with God. I was losing hope because at that moment, how do I know how many months or years I have to stay here? So I said, listen, if you help me to get out of here, I, for my life, my whole life, I will try to do good for other people. So and that's what I did. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm going to do as long as I live. The German bombardment of the south of France prompts the French to move their prisoners by train to safer camps in North Africa. However, the Nazis intercept the train, and Kurt joins a group of refugees in a suicidal escape attempt. While we jumped out, the machine guns rattled, rattled we heard, and we didn't know who's shooting whom here, because Germans, the Germans wanted us because we were Jews, and the French wanted us because we were, uh, were Germans, you understand? Kurt and Trude reunite in Marseille, and with the help of a priest, they secure false passports and hike up the Pyrenees towards the Spanish border. The descent from the 10,000-foot pass is deadly dangerous, and Trude is unable to continue, forcing Kurt to carry her down. They survive the perilous descent and board an overcrowded train to Madrid, 
Their false passports are spotted by the Gestapo, which arrests them. In a twist of fate, a mysterious Spanish gentleman with a fascist pin on his lapel emerges from the first class compartment and comes to their rescue. He must have been a very high animal because those two guys recognized him right away and saluted him and walked away. He says to my wife, my wife was absolutely, you know, she was in terrible condition. He said, don't worry, everything will be all right. The following morning, the benevolent fascist gives them money and visas and puts them on the train to Lisbon. Since 61 years, I have asked myself, what moved this man to come out to call on people he has never seen before and never seen again and behave like that? In Lisbon, the American embassy informs them that to enter the U.S., they need $4,000. Still the businessman, Kurt makes the money on the black market, and soon they are on their way to New York. The unbearable conditions in the concentration camp didn't prepare Kurt for the old, overcrowded steamer that would take them to freedom. The capacity was 540 persons. We were 1,600. I was with 400 others right on the bottom of the ship, right on the bottom of the ship. After we were about 150 miles away from the Statue of Liberty, the ship stops. After about half an hour or so, the captain sends a message down that the, the Germans on the sea boat had stopped the ship and they took over, came up, boarded the ship. I said, well, that's it. Because what usually happens, they see we on the board, they go back on the ship, push a few torpedoes in, a, in your ship, and that's it. So I think this where it's was the greatest tension in my life. But that day, the Nazis are not looking for refugees. They suddenly leave the steamer, letting it go on its way. You cannot imagine <laughs> the happiness of the people. Everybody was embracing everybody else. In June 1941, the Weishaupt set foot in New York. Kurt dedicates himself to becoming a successful businessman. Inspired by his life's journey and driven by his promise to God, Kurt has devoted his life to saving the lives of thousands of children around the world. His spirit of compassion, fueled by those that helped him, has inspired others to make a difference. People who helped me inspired me because they were risky, risking themselves and didn't mind to take the risk, you understand? You have to act like that. You have to help people. You have to show what you, what you feel. This is religion, in my opinion. And this is, should be the same in the whole world, not just for us. Kurt's compelling story has inspired us to share his mission with the world. We strongly believe its universal appeal will move and entertain audiences everywhere. To be a part of the journey, please request our feature-length screenplay.